I've been an owner of the Red Komodo for about three years now, and as my understanding of how best to expose an image with the camera has improved, my footage has improved. I'm gonna be specifically talking about the DSMC3s as the Komodo and the V-Raptor both have the same stoplight system, uh, though it does apply to really any RED camera uh, as the basic approach to exposure is the same. A lot of this information has been covered already by other sources, but I remember when I started out with the camera, there was a difference between understanding sort of the nuts and bolts of it and then how it really worked for me in real life circumstances. So I just wanted to distill what has helped me over the past few years and hopefully it'll help you too. The main thing you really want to think about when you're exposing a RED is how much light's actually hitting the sensor. Do you need more light hitting the sensor? Do you need less light hitting the sensor? You can affect how much light's hitting the sensor in a couple ways. You can adjust shutter angle, though you're probably not going to want to do that unless you're specifically trying to create a different motion cadence. So really what's left then is your f-stop, how open or closed your iris is, and if you have it, how much ND you're putting in front of the lens. ISO on these RED cameras is not the same as it is on pretty much any other camera. Your ISO doesn't affect how much light is hitting the sensor. Uh, so it's really important not to think of it as that. Basically the idea is that since you're shooting raw, you wanna try to maximize how much information you're capturing on your sensor without either clipping the highlights or crushing the blacks. So what you wanna do then is take a glance at your stoplights, which are gonna tell you exactly what your sensor is seeing. We'll just say your sensor can capture 15 stops of dynamic range. It's gonna to try to capture 15 stops of dynamic range all the time, no matter what your ISO is set at. The way to prove this is by noticing that if you have an exposure set where there is no clipping on your stoplights, it doesn't matter how high or how low you change your ISO, you're never gonna get clipping on the sensor. On the flip side, if you have a shot that is clipping in the highlights, at say a thousand ISO, no matter how low you go, it's not gonna change how much it's clipping at all. If you're crushing the blacks and you're, let's say you're at 250 ISO, you can jack that ISO up as high as you want and it's not gonna affect how much the sensor is clipping. Either you have a situation or a scene where you have more dynamic range than what your camera is capable of capturing, or you have the opposite you have a situation where your camera has more dynamic range than what is contained in the scene. If you're in the first situation where the, the scene has more dynamic range than what your camera is capable of capturing, you're gonna have to make a decision about do you wanna clip the highlights or do you wanna crush the blacks? You don't get to do both because your sensor is physically unable to get the whole dynamic range. I think the first thing to keep in mind when you're in that circumstance is that 800 is the native ISO for this camera. And all that means is that it's putting an equal amount of stops of latitude below and above middle gray. Despite the fact that it is true, if you set your ISO at 800, you have an equal amount of dynamic range above and below middle gray. If you are in a situation where your sensor can't deal with the amount of dynamic range in your scene, you do need to consider what you want your final image to look like. If you were shooting something more moody, like a person sitting on a couch in a living room with a window blasting from behind and there's no real light from the inside, if you're okay with feeling like the person's face can go underexposed or even into shadow, then it makes sense to try to shoot it at 800 and just do your best on managing, trying not to clip the blacks too much and try not to clip the highlights too much. It is worth noting that in general, the camera deals with underexposure better than overexposure if you have to choose one or the other. So if you clip the highlights, it's gonna look bad. If you crush the blacks, it might get noisy, but because it's a raw image and you've got a decent amount of resolution, you can use noise reduction pretty effectively to soften that that image. Again, though, it depends completely on what you're shooting. If you're shooting something where having the exposure on the person's face is the most important thing and it needs to be bright, then you don't have the luxury of underexposing their face so much in order to protect the highlights in the window. If you do that, you're going to come out with a muddy, noisy image on the person's face. And in that circumstance, I mean, ideally you'd add light, but if that's not an option, then it's better for you to get a nice exposure on the person's face and let the window blow out. It's not too often that the camera's dynamic range is not enough to handle the dynamic range of the scene. Far more often, the camera's sensor is able to handle more dynamic range than what is in the scene. So in that case, I would say that the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you're not 
accidentally clipping the sensor because there's absolutely no need to do that. If you've got that, you're in a great starting place. After that, again, like in the other circumstance, you want to consider what part of your image or what feel from your image is most important. While it is true that 800 is the quote unquote native ISO, I most often shoot at 500 ISO, and the reason for that is because I find that that 500 in general is a nice balance between a good amount of dynamic range and also a really clean image straight out of camera. I know that seems counterintuitive because by lowering the ISO, you're making the image darker. If you're raising the ISO, you're making it brighter. But you gotta, again, think about what you're actually gonna be doing as a result of raising and lowering the ISO in terms of how much light is or is not hitting the sensor. If you lower your ISO, you're making your image look darker. And so you'll naturally wanna open up the f-stops or shine more light on the scene or remove ND allowing more light to hit the sensor. And if nothing's clipping, then what you're doing is basically allowing the camera to see deeper into the shadows because you're giving the shadows more light in essence. So your shadows are gonna be cleaner because of that. On the flip side, if you're shooting something where say, you wanna make sure that your skin looks really good, but you've got skin in bright sunlight and there's nothing clipping, but it's it's so bright on your skin, you're afraid on the highlight side that it's gonna start to lose some of its information or some of its color de detail. You might wanna cheat the other way. I don't usually go above 800 ISO because I feel like you have enough dynamic range, flexibility, and enough latitude in the skin tones that it should be safe. But let's say you go at 800 or 1000 ISO, what will you do? It makes the image look brighter on your screen so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna either stop down or remove light or add ND, making less light hit the sensor, therefore those brighter parts of the, of the scene are actually exposed on the sensor in a darker way. It's, it's protecting the highlights from overexposing. I know that this all sounds kind of confusing, but it's really just about imagining physically light hitting your sensor, what things give you more light, what things give you less light. Most importantly, you wanna consider on the raw sensor, are you clipping or are you crushing anything? If you are, then you have to be careful about the choices that you make because it's gonna affect where you don't have information. Is it better for me to clip or crush? That's certainly the more dangerous circumstance that you really have to consider. If you aren't clipping or crushing anything, then the next choice is, what are you prioritizing in the scene? If you want your blacks and darker portions of the image to look really clean, then you need to give the sensor more light. If you wanna protect your highlights, then you wanna take a little light away in order to protect your sensor from getting too close to clipping. Think of the ISO as a LUT placed on top of the raw sensor data, which does not permanently affect any of the raw sensor data. As you raise the ISO, it adjusts the LUT so that the image appears brighter, but it's not actually affecting what your sensor is seeing. It's just affecting how you are perceiving what that information is that is being seen by the sensor. So as you raise the ISO, it brightens up the image. As you lower the ISO, it darkens the image to your eye through the preview. But Again, it's not actually changing what light your sensor is seeing, therefore your black point and your white point are not changing. They're staying the same. They're either clipping or not clipping based on how much light is or is not hitting the sensor. <laughs>